This video discusses difficult topics like death and suicide. It's not a substitute for professional help. If you feel like you need it, please take a look at the resources in the description. According to the World Health Organization, more than 700,000 people die due to suicide every year. But what about those who aren't included in these statistics? The ones who quietly suffer from suicidal thoughts every day? Even in our recent video on passive suicidal ideation, many of you agreed with not wanting to wake up in the morning, which is very alarming. So why is this happening? What makes so many people turn to such definite thoughts? This topic is often considered too dark and taboo to discuss, leading many people to suppress their feelings. This suppression can intensify emotions and worsen suicidal ideation. This is why we made this video. Let's dive into this important issue. Stuck in a cage. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by setbacks? Like every effort you make just leads to another failure. Or maybe you've been in a situation where it seems like there's no way out, no matter how hard you try to think of a solution. Psychologists believe that these two emotions, entrapment and defeat, predict suicidal ideation. Defeat refers to a sense of constant failure where life feels like a series of battles you can never win. When defeat sets in, it often leads to entrapment, the perception that you're stuck in a difficult situation with no escape. These feelings are incredibly difficult and can weigh heavily on anyone's mind. But for individuals experiencing suicidal ideation, these uncomfortable emotions become almost unbearable. When this happens, they might feel like suicide is the only way out, which is certainly not the case. These emotions might be powerful and consuming, but there are other paths to escape them, even if they aren't immediately visible. Therapy, support from loved ones, or simply enough time can provide new perspectives and solutions that seemed impossible before. Not a soul to tell. People who struggle with suicidal ideation may also feel disconnected from the world around them, even when surrounded by people. This deep sense of loneliness is more than being alone. It's being unseen, unheard, and unsupported. This loneliness doesn't just affect their mood, it can alter their thoughts and perceptions. That's why loneliness can often lead them to think nobody would care if they weren't there anymore. Researchers found that feeling lonely can have a devastating impact, especially on vulnerable populations, such as the elderly, adolescents, LGBTQ plus individuals, and those with chronic illnesses. This is why having a strong network of friends or family can provide emotional support, practical help, and a sense of belonging, relieving the burden of suicidal thoughts. But we know that it's often hard to find this kind of support. And that's why we hope our comment section can provide anyone with kindness, connection, and genuine concern. There's always someone out there to listen. Escape route. Imagine experiencing a kind of pain so deep and intense that it feels impossible to bear. This is not a physical pain, but a psychological one, often referred to as psychic. Psychic, a neologism coined by suicidologist Edwin Schneidman, is defined as unbearable psychological pain, hurt, anguish, soreness, and aching. Research has shown that people experiencing suicidal ideation are often highly motivated to avoid this psychological pain. They're not necessarily seeking death itself, but are driven by an intense wish to end their suffering. The thought of suicide serves them as a potential escape from their psychic. That's why they might fantasize about dying even if they don't actively engage in suicidal behavior. In a way, those fantasies provide them comfort from their hurt. Yet, there's a quote that perfectly describes the reality of these thoughts. Suicide does not end the pain. It passes it to someone else. By committing suicide, these feelings get transferred to loved ones and create a never ending loop of pain, grief, and loss. Inside a dark brain. Studies have shown that suicidal thoughts and behaviors are also linked to specific changes in the brain. Neuroimaging studies, which use advanced technology to look inside the brain, revealed noticeable changes in certain brain areas when someone experienced suicidal ideation. 
The ventral prefrontal cortex and dorsal prefrontal cortex are crucial for regulating our emotions and making decisions. The insula, another key brain region, helps us process our emotions and how we feel physically. When these areas are not working correctly, it can lead to intense negative feelings and difficulty making decisions. Essentially, these brain changes mean that people experiencing suicidal thoughts often can't think as clearly or make decisions as they normally would. The intensity of these thoughts and emotions can make it hard for them to see beyond their current state of mind. Understanding this can help us see why suicide is never a reasonable solution. Because the brain changes and intense emotions driving these thoughts are temporary and completely treatable. The Guardians. But no matter how overwhelming all of these emotions and thoughts can get, it's important to know that there's always hope. Psychologists call this protective factors. Things that can protect against suicidal thoughts or behaviors. Learning effective coping mechanisms is one such factor. These skills act as a toolkit to help you manage stress and emotional pain. Having a sense of purpose is equally important, whether it's through work, hobbies, or personal goals. Having something to strive for can give life meaning and direction and provide motivation. Access to mental health resources is another critical protective factor. Being able to reach out for professional help and support can make a significant difference. We listed some of these resources in the description box. Please take a look if you or someone you know needs them. We'd like to end this video with a personal example. On September 25th, 2000, 19-year-old Kevin Hines jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. During the fall, his body rotated in such a way that when he hit the water, his vertebrae and internal organs were damaged, but he survived. When asked about his experience, he later said, there was a millisecond of free fall. And in that instant, I thought, what have I just done? I don't wanna die. God, please save me. Kevin's story is a reminder that many people who attempt suicide may experience immediate regret, realizing they don't actually wanna die. Sadly, those who didn't survive likely felt the same, but they never got the chance to express it. Please. If you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, reach out and talk to someone. You're never alone and help will always be available.